We are following major news out of Washington tonight where special counsel Jack Smith has asked the Supreme Court to reject Donald Trump's effort to delay his criminal trial. Our dear friend Barb McQuaid is with us. She's a veteran federal prosecutor and former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. All right, Barb, break this down for us, because in the filing, Jack Smith says these crimes, quote, strike at the heart of our democracy. He didn't choose those words by accident. What do we need to know? Well, he's, he's really making two arguments here. One is that the Supreme Court should reject Donald Trump's efforts to prolong these delays and delay the trial. By re rejecting this uh, request for a stay, get the case back on track, back to trial where it belongs. In the alternative, Jack Smith argues that even if the court does decide to take up this case, it should treat this, this request for a stay as the, the petition itself to review the case and let's go put it on a fast track and get it decided because, as you say, it is such an important case. And it's because of the allegations here about, as you say, striking at the heart of our democracy, a, an attack on an election itself. And one of the points he makes is one that I think gets lost from time to time, and that is it's not just a defendant's right to a speedy trial. It is also the public's right to a speedy trial. And every minute that goes by where there is a delay means that the public is not getting its right to a speedy trial. And so he wants to encourage the court to take this case on so that it can be heard either right now, uh, let's just accept the decision of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, or if we're going to review it, let's do it quickly. Is that this whole ball game, right? So even if the court wants to hear the appeal, that they just get this thing done quickly because we all know what's going to happen if it goes past the election. Yes. And so one of the things that Jack Smith argues is if we take this on an expedited basis, you could have oral arguments, say, in a month. That's March. And this court could still make the decision by the end of this term, typically in June. That would give enough time to get the case back to the trial court and have a trial this summer. I think one thing he's concerned, if it goes on the slower track, it could be that the court finishes this term without having heard the case and sets it for oral argument next term in the fall, in which case there's no way this case gets tried before the election. So this is a very important decision point for the court. Bloomberg reports that Trump is on pace to drain his legal funds by July. That never stopped him as a businessman who ran out of money and didn't pay his contractors, lawyers, and anyone else in his orbit. But truly, if he has no money left in July, what happens to this? Yeah, you know, uh, if he doesn't have money to hire lawyers, then lawyers could uh, walk away. You know, there's an old joke lawyers make that, you know, we had a problem because we couldn't agree on Mr. Green. That is the polite <laughs> way of saying that my, my client wasn't paying me. And so uh, we, we severed ties. My guess is that he will continue to have lawyers for one of two reasons. Either he will continue to fundraise and find ways to crowdsource the payments he needs for his lawyers or he will find lawyers who will do this for free because they think it is good publicity for their careers. Uh, so I, I don't expect he is going to, uh, you know, be asking for a court-appointed counsel because he can't afford one anytime soon. Or he'll find some outside sources with deep, deep pockets who want to bet on getting some big, big political favors.